Thanks for staying with us. Now, in continuation of the conversation around the protest and the aftermath, we are asking in Nigeria, is Nigeria worth all this trouble? Is Nigeria worth dying for? Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. We'll bring in our guest in a short while. I see Lamy and um, Uti firing at each other about the palliative and the counter, um, you know, conversations. Now, I mean, it's not different from what is even going on online because I did a video this morning on my social media page and I was saying to someone that I used to have a nanny, right? The nanny used to steal rice and, and uh, seasoning and beans and all of those things, food stores, she takes it home. And I overlooked it and I, 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 I excused it and I said it was poverty, right? Maybe because she does not have or something. But that stealing soon graduated. It soon graduated to stealing of... My, uh, I had a sister-in-law that used to live with me then. She used to work in a bank. She stole her Brazilian hair. My mom got a brand new perfume. She stole that. She stole people's clothes, right? So it graduated from the gari, the rice, the beans, and all of that. To, she started stealing uh, personal effects. Now, same thing with this palliative. When Maza Maza happened, it was... Uh, we saw cartons of noodles, we saw gari, we saw sugar, we saw rice, we saw salt, right? That was what we saw. But today, as of today, when I went online, what I was seeing were toilet seats, television sets, deep freezers, different ut uh, household items. You know, I saw they broke into an orthopedic hospital in Calabar, stealing different things, I, I, something that was wrapped like a material or something. So... Where do you now say, how do you justify, like, I'm trying to be calm to talk about this thing, but I don't even understand it. Where do we justify this, that we are trying to make an excuse to say it's because of poverty, it is because of the leaders. If you can steal this, what happens tomorrow if you eventually get to the position of authority? You will do the same, if not worse. Fully agree with you, Oa. Um, and that's essentially what I am simply saying. I am, I am trying to just say that, look, accountability is for all of us. We are all Nigerians. We all as a collective make up Nigeria. If we begin and continue to excuse these things, everything is excusable giving any kind of context. So it is, it is, and I know some people will say, oh, it's easy for you to say you're not in that context, you're not in. We've all had people in these similar situations you know, people that work for us who no matter what will not steal, they will rather come to you and say, this is my situation. These are my circumstances. And I know that this is what it is. And this is where for me, I, I worry because I just say, look, we have to be what we want to see. We have to be because the, the people who are going to govern us, they're not going to come. They're not going to drop from the sky. They're not going to come from anywhere else. They're going to come from within us. So even if we have this culture of no consequences, of poverty, of all the various things, you can't give what you don't have. Okay. And that's where I, I just see, I'm so concerned that this is, this thing will keep perpetuating because we always have a way to justify it. Absolutely. Um, okay, Uti, I agree completely lame, with you and Lua. And I know that over the course of many shows we've done, I've always repeated it, but um, there's this, this gross institutional failure, um, failure in Nigeria. And I, I remember, I think one of the shows, I was saying that, the bus is when you're driving on the road. Is it Buari that is driving the bus? Is it the one that will come from Abuja and ensure that we, we, we do the right thing? Today, I was driving my daughter to her ballet class. And right in front of me, there was amber, the amber light, then it was red. I can tell, she's three years old. Everybody right behind me did not stop. She told me, she said, mommy, don't join them. Red light means stop. Green light means go. Mm. Even if I wanted to join them, I was shocked that she already knew. So neither, I don't know. No, you know what? Let me bring. Let me bring in our guest. Let me bring in our guest because. Hola, Mide, can you hear me? Okay, so let me bring in our guests because um, I, all these things is actually why I'm asking this question. Is it even worth all the trouble? Is Nigeria worth dying for? Now, Ola, 
Well, Olakunle Sherio is a polymath and um, icono, uh, iconoclast, um, catalytic thought leader, and a um, keynote speaker whose expression spans across the globe as he influences and shapes culture. And he's joined the conversation. In fact, we are going to have a part one and part two. Today is just part one. So, um, Kunle Sherio, thank you so much for joining us. I think you need to unmute yourself if you can hear me. Yes, I think I'm unmuted. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. So you've been listening to Great. our conversations, you know, um, about yeah. all the happenings in Nigeria. It's quite overwhelming. I'm so upset, you know, because it seems like um, we, we can't see. People can't see that whatever it is that we're doing is killing us, you know. People are making excuses for people going all over the place and vandalizing and destroying people's properties. You know, so maybe you help me make sense of this. I don't even know if Nigeria is worth all the stress anymore. You know, let, let, let me ask you guys a question. If you have a snake in your house, and you know the snake is in your house, but you don't know where it is, it comes out once in a while. You don't see the snake comes out, but it will come out, you know, take some of your raw eggs, and disappear, but you don't know where this, this, this snake is. You are really worried about this snake. You know the snake is there, but you don't know where it is. You've called fumigators. They've come to the house. They try to get rid of the snake. You don't even see the snake anymore, but you know the snake is there. And then you've been able to move out of the the main building to another building. The snake, the snake is still in your compound, but your success has helped you to have another building in the house where you stay and it doesn't seem like the snake is there, right? But you know there's a snake in your compound, right? Then one day, the snake is there, is procreating, is giving birth, but away from your view. Then one day, you know, there was a smoke a, or your neighbor plants a type of grass that is sniffing out snakes. Then all the snake in your compound came out, you know, that day, 18 of them at the same time. What will be your surprise? Is it that you saw snake? That will be your surprise. Will you be surprised that there's this, there are snakes in your compound? Are you going to be shocked? Are you going to be worried? Are you going to be, apart from trying to save your life, tell me your next degree of, of, of concern. Uti, what let would me start be? with you. <laughs> I mean, if you knew you had snakes, then you would expect that the snakes would still be there. Great. So when you then see 10 snakes, you don't, you don't express surprise or shock, right? So the, the, what you are seeing on a large scale has been existing on a micro scale in different communities. I don't know where you guys live, but I suspect that you'll be living somewhere on the island or Magodo in one sealed, safe area. You have helped yourself. You've worked hard and helped yourself to a place where you really are away from the growth and the nurturing and the development of the evil we see today. Mm. But the evil has always been there for years. And every time there's an opportunity, a smoke, gives this evil, this monster that we are brewing, that we are nurturing, to have air and space. He hits everything and attempts to even eat us, right? Those who started the protest, some of them have stores that has been looted already. Some of the action men in the front of the protest probably have lost their store in the war in who supported the protest have lost massively to this same evil you know why because agitation must not precede education when agitation precedes education right it creates chaos and the chaos would take re would get rid of the owners of the agitation so the upper, upper, upper class will not really feel what is going on. The middle class, lower middle class, who are in front of the protest mainly, are the ones who own the stores and the small businesses and, the, and all of that. And they are the ones that will be eaten by this same monster. But the problem is where you and I sit, 
poor. Where you and I sit, we have to choose what we want. If we want justice or we want progress, they are two different things. A lot of the things that we say and how we look at these things is not captured with, within those two blocks. If you want peace, if you say PDP is stupid, correct. APC is mine, correct. Nepal is silly, correct. There are no roads, correct. You'll be correct on many levels. But after you are done, you must ask yourself, do I want to be correct or I want to progress? Because if you want to be correct, all you need is a chair to sit down and be pointing fingers at where the dual did could have done better and all of that. And then you'll be all correct. But if you want to progress, you have to say to yourself, there is a tree on my streets. I don't want this tree. If I don't want this tree, I cannot continue to cut the leaves. Mm -hmm. I have to go to the roots. And I'm the roots it. of what you are talking about, when you complain about these guys who roar, who do all of that, who bob, up buzz all of these things, you are cutting the leaves. You are not discussing the tree. Let me remind you that a lot of those people are not in their day job, in the day of peace and tranquility. They are not thieves. Some of them are organizers who are dropping into the store and carrying a TV. Some of them are artisans. Some of them are, you know, chauffeurs, drivers. Some of them are security guards. They have, you know, jobs of meaning, mm. dignity of labor on a daily basis. But they have an opportunity that has placed a demand on their human wretchedness, which exists in all people, even in good people. The potential for evil on a large scale exists depending on the pressure, who as you are sitting there, you can kill. You won't kill without a reason that aligns with your conscience. Yeah. But if an armed robber comes into your house, shoots your driver, shoots your cook, shoots your nanny, comes into your sitting room, is about to shoot you, the, the gun fell from his hand and came to your leg, and he's bringing out another gun, you are probably going to pick that gun and shoot. That's called self-defense. They won't call you a murderer. Mm. You see, the idea... The idea is there's so much trapped in us. Those guys are the ones that are being tested mm. by the harshness of the system. Mm -hmm. And every one of us perform to installed capacity. Ola Kuleshorio is my name. If I'm angry, I will come on TV. I will go to my page. I will write a blog. I will do many things. My education, my exposure. I live in Dallas. I've read comics. I've gone to school. I have degrees. I have certifications of all kinds. I've started watching comics since I was a kid. I've read different types of novels. I'm exposed. I have a minimum level of behavior by virtue of my exposure. So I perform to install capacity. When the guy who lives in a jegule or emotion is angry like me, is as livid as me. He doesn't have my exposure. He doesn't have my training. He doesn't have all the restraining factors. He would have loved to behave like me, but he doesn't know how. The only way he know how to behave with the same anger is to burn, is to pull down, is to destroy, is to do all of that. He is also performing to install capacity. A 40 kV agent can never perform like a 120 kV agent. And a 10 kV agent can never perform to a 20 kV agent. So these are the demons we have made. All the private schools, for example, exist only because public schools are dead. Yeah. You have elites who will send all their kids to the private schools, but they, do, they forgot that the private schools will never be what they are today if the public schools are not dead. So who is going to the public schools? The best teachers are already in the private schools. And the public schools have been attended by our nannies, our, the sons of our security guards and low teaching, poor classrooms, and all of that. That is where those guys go. It's not a surprise that they don't finish school. In the 60s, in the 70s, the sons of the poor can go to a public school. I went to a public school, and I'm doing well. People went to Baptist Academy. They went to Ajang Badi High School. They went to one pri private primary school, and they still went to become a lawyer. They did all of that. All of that is missing. It, the curriculum, the attitude, the culture in the public school, public school now you, does not even encourage you to finish school at all. So you the are making you the matter. Primary six, you are done. You don't even want to go back there. There's nothing inspiring Pique. about academics in the public schools. Pique. So these are the challenges that we have. There are private schools in America, but to go there, <laughs> you have to pay through your nose. But you see, you don't have to worry about that because the public schools work. Pique, can the you hear me? The public schools work. You see. 
So that is the challenge. These guys don't get the attention their individuality deserves. Mm. They don't get the resources their individuality deserves. They don't get the respect and the honor their individuality deserves. They don't get the right to dream and the assurance that if they dream and they work for it, they can get the outcomes of the impact of that dreams. They don't have all of that. And then we are shocked that that is happening. <laughs> Come on, I think that we are being completely unrealistic. I think, and I don't mean us on this panel, I mean the body of the nation. So what we need to do is to let this situation ask us within. Now, I support what, um, I, I missed a name, I think. Uti, um, or Lani. Uh, Eti. Uti. Uti, you know, I'm so sorry, Uti, for for not calling your name right. I support what she's saying because we have to hold people accountable. But that they are doing that is also not us. It's the failure of the system. Okay. The social justice system is failing. So we must hold the system accountable still, right? To hold those guys accountable because we pay taxes for security of life and property. So the system should still be held accountable. Then deeper, we must still hold the system accountable and ourselves to say, how do we go forward? You pay somebody a salary. The salary is maybe 25000 You can afford 200000 You won't feel it. But it's house help. And they pay house help 25000 So you are going to pay the house help 25000 You forgot that any salary that cannot do three things, a salary that cannot help you um, take care of your basic needs, like eating, feeding, going out, clothing, and coming back. Two, a salary that cannot help you put something aside for the people you believe in or for the future you understand, 2K aside, to save. A salary that cannot help you bless your area of influence, given to your child or to your daughter. Once a salary cannot do those three things, it's not a salary, it is slavery. Okay, so PK. It is slavery. And PK. if you can't afford that kind of money, you should appeal to the person and manage the person. Don't brag and say you are paying something. And so you pay somebody 25K to pursue an entire destiny. And when you choose to kidnap, you are stunned. It's in your house. Your son was born in our presence. People say, oh, he has been in our house for 25 years and he kidnapped and after 25 years of faithfulness. What do you mean faithfulness? 25 years of watching your children progress, of seeing them coming back to give him instructions. The human life is not built to perpetually accept retrogression and stagnation. The, even if you don't want to revolt, something inside of you will revolt. And if you lack the education and the awareness to manage the revolution of your pain, you are going to go left. And on the left, that's kidnap. That's arm robbery. That's okay, so PK, I don't know if you can hear me now because, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to, to unbundle with the conversation, you know, so that um, I can let um, Uti and... Um, um, let me ask some questions. But because now we have really run out of time, we need to go on a break. But when we return, let me and um, Uti, I think you have some comments and you also have some um, questions. We'll take that. Then PK will respond to that. But PK, you are still not answered my question. Is Nigeria worth dying want, for? So you are going to answer that question when we come back from the break. Please stay with us.